Hello. In this video, we are going to be talking about ILS and localizer approaches, specifically some common mistakes that I see students making on them. So as you can see up here, we have the ILS or localizer uh, runway 17 at uh, Pensacola International. Looking up, one of the first things you want to see in the top left corner is that you have the paired DME localizer frequency. So what that means is we're going to be getting DME off of the localizer in this. You can see we uh, can confirm that coming down, seeing DME coming off the I-Pensacola and that we have DME right there. Okay, so it's paired uh, runway 17 inbound course is 169 airport information uh, I'm gonna skip over most of these notes here except uh, take note that there's a note about the Alico fix right uh, right there okay so we'll come back to that in a little bit lighting missed approach instructions I'm gonna skip over those as well but I just want to point out that there's also these alternate missed approach instructions right here uh, so just keep an eye out that uh, you may be given those uh, it, it's not very common. It's not even very common to be given the actual missed approach instructions, but it is something that can happen. So just be aware that uh, that, that exists. Okay. Coming down, uh, we can see that we have a couple initial uh, approach fix options here for the approach, uh, and we can fly either the full procedure, fly the barb, or radar vectors to final. And this, I'm probably going to be talking more about radar vectors to final. Uh, because uh, you know, flying a barb is is something you guys get uh, get training on in other places, and this is specifically about ILS and localizer approaches. So one of the first things I want you to know when we come down to the uh, the profile view is this VGSI and ILS glide path not coincident. Okay, so the VGS got VGSI, so the visual uh, lights angle is three degrees. Uh, if you come down, you can also see that the glide slope for the ILS is also 3 degrees. Okay, but the threshold crossing height is a little different, so 47 feet versus 51 feet. And what that means is that the lights are just uh, going to be taking you to a little shorter point on the runway than the, uh, so, than the ILS will. So the lights may take you to there, and the actual ILS glide slope will take you to there. So that's all that that really means, okay? Not a big note, but just keep in mind things like that exist. So how do we identify the FAF on this ILS approach, okay? Well, FAFs are always glide slope, intercept, at the published altitude, right? So here we come down, we see 1,700 feet right there as the published altitude at our glide slope intercept. Okay, so when we hit 1,700 feet and we have the glide slope centered, that's when we are at our final approach fix. Okay, simple enough for the ILS. See, so have ILS all the way down to minimums, 321, 1,800 RVR, 200 feet height above touchdown, and 200 and a half for our weather. Cool, simple. Um, and now the ILS is kind of the, the easy part of this. So now I want to start talking more about localizers through the rest of this video. Okay, so first things first, how do we identify the final approach fix on the localizer here? Okay, so FAF for the loc. Okay, well, it's, we can see it's the, we have the Maltese cross there, right? Um, so it's uh, pretty simple for this first one. So 6.3 DME. Uh, is when we hit our final approach fix. So if we're on the localizer, we're established, and we hit 6.3 DME, we have met our final approach fix. Okay, so simple enough, right? But what happens after that? Well, we can see this Alico intersection, which I told you to keep in mind earlier up there, right? So at 3.5 DME, we have this 760-foot intermediate fly-off we have to hit. Now keep in mind, if we're flying the ILS, that, that's completely irrelevant. We don't care about that alco. We see the note al or, uh, localizer only there. There's no minimums for the ILS down here. We only have localizer or circling minimums. So this only applies to the localizer. All these intermediate fly-offs only apply to the localizer. Okay, so what that means is that if we can identify Alico, and what do we need to identify it? Well, we need dual VOR receivers or DME to be able to identify Alico. We should have DME, so with that DME, we uh, can then go down to these minimums of 480, right? 
if we have Alico fixed. If not, we're just stuck at that 760 as our minimums the, the whole way through, right? Cool. Um, so then we also have to talk about what's the missed approach point on the loc versus the missed approach point for the ILS. Okay, This is something I see messed up a lot as well. So the missed approach point for the ILS is when you hit your decision altitude. Okay, That's when you decide, am I going to land or am I going to go missed approach? Here for the localizer, we have um, either our backup timing, which is our secondary way, or that 1.5 DME at the uh, approach end of the runway for our missed approach point. Okay, So make sure that you are, uh, are using those properly. All right, so now I want to talk more about the different types of final approach fixes you can have for a localizer because this is what I see messed up a lot. So we just saw right up here we have a paired DME and uh, we, we can just use that for our final approach fix. Coming down here, if we go over to Crest View, this runway 17 localizer there, and again I'm just going to be talking about the localizer, how do we identify this final approach fix here? Well, uh, as you can see, we have this. Cobra LOM, the left outer, or the I'm sorry, the outer marker there, and it has this weird uh, symbol there. That's for an NDB actually, um, which I'm not going to get too much into that there. But what we can see is we don't have a paired DME. We don't have DME at all if you look down in that uh, that uh, plant that profile view. So we have to use this outer marker to identify the final approach fix for the localizer. And some of you may be wondering, how do you do that? Well, if you go on your ICS panel and you click out that marker button, you can hear the six beeps when you cross over it. And then additionally, on your center MFD, you've got your engine tape, or your altitude, your airspeed, you know, your or your attitude indicator. We have your map view down here. All right, so if you go and look on uh, your center MFD, when you cross over that outer marker, you'll get a little beep um, and an OM right there. It'll be blue, uh, and it'll start flashing uh, when you cross over it as well. So that's how you can identify the final approach fix on this localizer approach, okay? So you have both the aural with the marker on the ICS, and you also have the visual on your uh, your center MFD there. Okay. Next up is uh, one that I see tricking students up quite a bit, and that's the mobile regional localizer final approach fix. Okay. So if you can see this, this little note right there that says radar required. Okay. Well, why is radar required? Well, it's for that K at intersection. Okay. So you can see there, there's no DME, again, no DME, no paired frequency, no DME. Um, it's not a localizer DME, it's just a localizer. Okay, So to identify CAT, there's actually only two ways to do it. So the first is you get it radar identified by control. You just say, you know, mobile approach, red night, one, two, three, request radar identification of CAT. Okay, you can do that. Uh, there's also another way, and it's that the FAA allows us to use GPS to identify waypoints as well, with the caveat that it must be loaded from the database the full approach, or from the approach, right? So you can't just type KAT into the FMS, you actually have to load the full approach to be able to use it. Some of the common things I see are trying to use 16 DME, DME holding off of Brooklyn, or 3.6, uh, DME holding off of stems. Both of those are completely 100% incorrect ways to do it. You cannot do that. The only ways to legally identify KAT are either via radar or using the uh, the GPS waypoint loaded from the full approach. Okay. Uh, and then finally, we just have uh, uh, one back from my old stomping ground of uh, Del Rio, Texas. So we see that this is a localizer DME approach, but when we look over, we d we see that it's not a uh, a paired f the localizer is not a paired frequency, right? So this is one of the cases where we'd have to use that DME hold and as you can see right here too. So there's all sorts of clues to it. One, localizer is not paired 
but we have DME down here. Two, DME stated off of DLF right there, not IDLF. IDLF, IDLF does not equal DLF, okay? So they're two completely different things, all right? So uh, we also ha see that there's no paired um, uh, attack and frequency up there for the DME either. So those are all different cues to you that you will need to uh, to DME hold off of that one. So that's uh, uh, just kind of a quick overview on ILS and localizers and uh, a bit more on different FAFs, ways to identify the FAF for localizers. So I hope this was instructional. I'll see you next time.